Hi there, everybody. Um, my name is Lauren Daigle, and I am with All Steel and Gunlock, and I am the current president of the Chicago chapter of Cornet Global. With me on the other side of the computer is the chief executive officer of Cornet Global Association, Angela Kane. And right now is a time when I think everyone is looking for inspiration because these are unprecedented times. So we as a board thought, what better way to do that than to reach out to some of the leading women in our industry, starting with the leader of our organization, association, and, and, and try to find some inspirational stories. And we're calling it 15 Women, 15 Minutes. So kind of wanting to, be, wanting to laugh, wanting to be inspired. Both of us have talked about the possibility of dogs barking, children interrupting, anything's possible in our, in our new normal. Um, but, you know, let's, let's dig right in and talk a little bit, Angela, maybe about your career journey and kind of how you arrived where you are today and maybe some mentors along the way that inspired you. Sure. Thank you so much for having me. I don't know how inspirational I'll be, but I'll definitely try to entertain you at a minimum. <laughs> Um, you know, I think it's great to give women this voice and an opportunity to, to share a bit about their journey. For me, I began with a degree in journalism and was a newspaper reporter for a number of years. And I thank my lucky stars. I'm not one of those right now because there's so much going on in the world that you know, having to cover all that's happening with COVID and the racial injustice, all of those things would be so difficult and heartbreaking to have to deal with on such a, an intimate level. So I did begin my career in journalism, have a tremendous amount of respect for those in that field right now in particular. But I transitioned from that into PR and marketing with NACOR International, which was a predecessor organization to Cornet Global. And from that moved into event planning and uh, left the organization, ran another one and came back as the CEO back in 2010. But you know, I know when we were prepping for this session, we talked a little bit about, you know, were there times that I had to step back as a professional to step forward? And I absolutely did. Uh, in my early 20s, I <clears throat> was doing PR for NACOR and was asked by the CEO to help recruit an executive assistant for him. And in doing that, I thought, hmm, I could probably do my job and that job. And so made a proposal to him, which was pretty nervy at the time, uh, to say, hey, I think I could do both. And in that time, I learned so much about how to run an association from a vantage point I never would have had had I taken that role as an executive assistant. You know, when I graduated from college, I thought I'm going to have an executive assistant. But it was a great starting point uh, to launch my career and to, to enable me to do more things. So Gordon Wiley was that CEO, and he was a tremendous mentor to me. And what I learned most from him was really just his kindness and interest in people. He talked to the person who cleared his table as much as he talked to a CEO of another company with the same kindness and respect. And so that's something I very much tried to emulate in my own career as well. And I think that's great. I think we've also talked a lot about authenticity. I think seeing that in people, it sounds like Gordon very much was that person. It didn't matter who you were that he, that he was talking with. He treated you with respect. And I've always kind of felt that way about mentorship for me and personally in my career. Those that have sort of just spoken with me like somebody that they would talk to, didn't matter what my title was or what their title was immediately for me raises the raises somebody up um, really sort of puts them on that pedestal um, and, and, and makes you value them so much more in your career yeah and he's the person that we named our H Gordon Wiley MCR young leader of the year award after and he was just someone who always wanted to see young people grow and you know I try to do the same in my own position and the one thing that I always try to tell you know young people starting out is be humble you know go in to a job knowing how to ask the right questions, not coming in with all the answers. And that's certainly something that I've always tried to do in this job. You know, chief listening officer first, chief executive officer second. Sure, and I think that's great advice right now. I think it's gotta be, well, it doesn't have to be. It is an incredibly difficult time, I think, for the 20-somethings, for anyone graduating right now. Um, any advice you would give them beyond maybe being humble, words to, something to think about as they look for a job in a, at a time when that's not necessarily easy. It's never easy, but right now it's incredibly difficult. Right. You know, I think that I read an article recently about what recruiters were talking to prospective employers about. And one of the, I mean, employees about, 
one of the things that they said was it used to be you started off an interview with, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. And they've shifted gears a bit in these recent times and have said, what have you done lately? You know, what have you done in your company to try to make a difference? And I think that's what you need to demonstrate. It's not what you know, it's what you've been able to accomplish and how you've been able to bring people together to bring creativity and new ideas to bear uh, through actions. And so I think that's a good question for people to ask me, what have you done lately? Oh, that's great. Can you, I, I think that is great. And I, I know sometimes in interviews, I, I remember sort of saying, someone saying like, what have you done and how would you do it differently? Um, so that makes me think of like criticism, right? Um, can you think of a time in your career when maybe someone criticized you and it really helped you or propelled you forward? I think that particularly in associations, you know, you're, you're managing a large number of people with lots of different ideas, um, many of them great. An association can't accomplish everything. And I think that there have been, you know, difficult times when I've had to say no to things that may have been great, but were just not something that we could accomplish successfully at that particular given time. And sometimes you do have to make the tough choices. You know, what's good for the many, not the needs of the few. And there have been times in Cornet Global when we've had to say, you know, we need to focus on the greater good and not just, you know, preferences of a small group of people. And you do, when you do that and you focus on the right thing, you can get past that and then focus on some of the smaller needs. So I think I've learned that you can't be all things to all people on any given day, just like I don't think I'm a great parent every day or a great CEO every day. Someday my kids go to school with Pop-Tart in their hair and I've learned that that's okay. <laughs> As I mentioned, mine was running around naked and I'm like, well, you're in front of the window, get away from the window. So um, yeah, I think we all have new challenges, things that we've never dealt with before. Um, but wait a minute, I had a good thought there on a question for you and I just lost it. Um, I lose so things daily. So. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh my goodness, it just totally escaped. Hey, and then I'm, um, uh, I'm going to skip to the question about a book because you and I were talking another time and you mentioned a book that you were reading. And I think we could all use great ideas right now, whether it's a, a puzzle that was fantastic or a book. And you mentioned a book that I think the board read. And I'd love to hear. Yeah, about it's, it's a book called The Power of Moments by Chip and Dan Heath. And actually our entire staff read it. Wow. And the staff broke it down and shared, um, you know, things that they took away from the book and then actually took action from it. The whole premise of the book is that, you know, you can create amazing experiences, you know, one small experience at a time for your customers and clients. And it, I'm not one who ever reads, you know, business motivation or sales books per se, but this one is just moving because it gives examples of the high school principal who went out of his way to, you know, celebrate people who weren't the sports athletes, but had done other great things in their careers and made, you know, amazing memories. It was about, you know, a company that did a, a, an amazing first day on the job for new hires and simple things that made someone really feel a part of a company uh, on the very first day. So there's great examples in that book that I think cut across any career that you're in. But we just loved the idea of creating those impactful experiences one person at a time. I think that's great. Thank you. And I did remember it, it, about our other conversation, what somebody said to me when um, there's a lot of ideas out there and everyone's got something coming at you and you can't make everybody happy. Um, a good friend of mine in the industry said, focus on the turkey. This was more about me. He said, focus on the turkey, not the Thanksgiving dinner. I but love it. it. It made me laugh, but it was something very simple. And that was my friend. That's right. Manny Otto, a past president, another past president. It made me smile. So Sorry, I had to kind of go back to that thought. I'm like, no, there was a good quote that was stuck in my head. It's um, great. <laughs> yeah, but that book sounds like a good one. Um, I think right now I'm stuck in a, a John Grisham novel, but I think I, I'd love to find something a little bit more, more of an inspirational type book. Um, to it's a quick, mind. easy read and very uplifting. Sounds really good. And I think we talked about this and you had an interesting response. I said, if you could, if you were free to go travel right now, which I think we kind of are, but there are uh, the bigger concerns and we all have to address those for ourselves, but is there anywhere you'd want to go? And I think you had a different take on this. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that for me, travel has been such an integral part of this job in building community as an association. So it seems odd to be holed up in my house, not out and about with members. So the first thing I look forward to doing is not so much a vacation, although that would be grand, 
but just the idea of getting out with chapter leaders and reconnecting with our local chapters. They really are the heartbeat of this association and just to feel that connectivity. Zoom is great, WebEx is great. It's been great to be connected to people in a virtual format, but you know, I can't wait until I can look people in the eyeballs in person and you know, six feet apart, but still having um, that ability to connect personally, because that's just what I think makes Cornet Gro Global so special. I would agree. I miss that. And I think we're, we're all feeling the, the, the lifting of all the different rules within our different cities and states um, and allowing us to sort of get out there. And I really look forward to that um, as well. I'm going to go to something that might make us laugh, but tell me about the most challenging subject you've had to help your children with in e-learning. <laughs> oh my gosh, math. <laughs> math. Always math. <laughs> I don't yeah. understand the new way they're teaching it. Uh, I don't think that it makes a whole lot of sense to me. I can get to the answer, but I can't tell them how to go through the steps where they have to show the work. So I, teachers are horribly underpaid and I know that they had to pivot in a way that you know a lot of people can't fully grasp when they weren't used to teaching anything virtually and within you know, a couple of days time have to revert to a, a virtual learning experience. So I think it was a, a big deal for them to get through and I applaud all of them because it was not easy. But we're done here in Georgia. We're done with schools. <laughs> we are too here in Chicago, and I'm I'm thankful for that. And I think I've learned a whole new level of patience. I wouldn't say that it's always my forte, but uh, I think teachers. I always I was an English and a history major, and people used to say, "Did you want to be a teacher?" And I said, "No, I could never have done that." And now I definitely know I could never have right. done that. And I have all the admiration in the world and the greatest respect for them. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. They, they are underpaid uh, for sure. And hopefully coming out of so much that we're learning right now, maybe there will be some more change there too. Um, so you know, I, did learn, I did learn through that, that, you know, even Cornet Global has a greater capacity to do more virtually. And that even with our MCR courses, you know, so much of the rich, richness of that program is the in-person gatherings that we hold but we've been able to successfully pivot those to virtual and people are adapting you know in a way that probably we wouldn't have adapted as easily had we not been in the midst of a, a crisis so you learn in these times for sure it is amazing i think about that too when we all of a sudden it was a march we had a program on march 12th here in chicago and march 11th the speakers were in town but everything was shutting down and we made that decision and it was the right decision um, but it was amazing how quickly we were able to learn from the, the global organization, how quickly you turned and were able to provide so much for us to look at and to consider and, and to mobilize and move forward. And I agree. I mean, I, Zoom drives me crazy. All of the platforms drive me crazy. Right. Or because you, you can just keep going and not stop. But at the same time, thank goodness it's allowed us to stay connected, um, like you said, which we, which we do need. So I enjoy it. And at the same time, I'd like to throw my laptop out the window. And I'm with you. <laughs> I think we have a couple minutes left. I was trying to keep us truly under 15 minutes. Anything else, any other inspiring stories or great movies or great Netflix series or anything that you, you can think of that might just be fun to share or just a story that made you laugh? Gosh, I'm trying to think. I know. Uh, you know, I think that it's been great for me to see in my you know, years with Cornet Global, both as the predecessor organization and now over a 20 year time frame how much we've grown in terms of the partic participation of women in this association and how more women are finding a voice and leadership roles within a you know, predominantly male uh, profession of corporate real estate. So it's been great to see that growth. It's always been humbling to be the CEO of an association uh, you know, of this caliber and scope. And, you know, I'm just proud of all the women I see and how much they've grown and are thriving in their careers. And I'd like to think I've had a little tiny piece in helping bring that along and giving more women a voice in the profession. I know for me, the most amazing experience I had in my tenure at Cornet Global was interviewing Madeleine Albright, former Secretary of State, on the stage at one of our global summits in D.C. a few years back. And, you know, she was all those things we talked about earlier in this chat, you know, humble smart, uh, savvy, and had that great emotional intelligence. She's just someone that you could connect with. Plus, she looked exactly like my grandmother, which I couldn't get past when I was with her on the stage. She was just adorable. Uh, but, you know, it's women like her that give me hope for the future of this country and for the future of this association. 
And I think those are great words to close by. The, I think I mentioned this quote to you in the past and I found it and I'll probably mispronounce the source, but it was the fastest way to change society is to mobilize the women of the world by Charles Malik. And I hope I'm saying that name right. But I think on that note, thank you, Angela. Um, we look forward to continuing with this series, bringing it here to our local level, but thank you for kicking us off. Um, thank and you. Sure and like my mother, and like my mother always told me, she said, you know, if you want to get something done, ask a busy woman. And I think that's very much true. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thank you again. Take care. Thanks for inviting me. Bye-bye.